This article will demonstrate bipotal endoscopic transforaminal lumbar in the body fusion BET leaf surgical techniques using double cages. BET leaf is performed under endotracheal general anesthesia, with the patient placed in the prone position on a radiolution spine table. Because the surgery is performed with continuous saline irrigation, Watertight draping is essential to prevent the patient from soaking, which could result in hypothermia. The table should be adjusted to ensure the fluoroscope's free passage to obtain clear anterior, posterior, and lateral images. A transparent covering hood for the fluoroscope is handy when checking the lateral image. The following procedures will be demonstrated at the L45 level from the right side approach. First, we need some skin markings for localization. We prefer the mini open wellsis approach between the multifidus and the longest mastoisi muscles. The skin markings include the disc line, the medial and the lateral pedicle lines, the inferior pedicle line of the upper vertebra, and the superior pedicle line of the lower vertebra. The longitudinal skin incision is 1 or 1.5 cm lateral to the lateral pedicle lines, which is also used for insertion of pedicle screws. The length of the skin incision is about 2.5 to 3 cm for a one-segment fusion, and 4 to 5 cm for a two-segment fusion. Another small incision at the intersection of the lower vertebra's medial and the lower pedicle lines is created to insert the endoscope. After incising the deep fascia and the gentle dissection of the intermuscular plane down to the facet joint, we insert the radio frequency wand and the endoscope to establish the triangulation. Then we start saline irrigation, use the radio frequency wand to clean the soft tissue and create the working space. We use the high-speed bird with a 4mm coarse diamond boy tip to start the laminotomy. The starting point of a laminotomy is the conjoined part of the spinous process and the lamina, also known as the spinal laminar junction. After the cranial margin of the ligamentum flavin is exposed, we use the straight and the curved osteotomes to chop off the inferior articular process into small pieces. These bone chips are used as autologous bone grafts. The rectal decompression is achieved by sublaminar decompression to the contralateral lateral recess, and then the ligamentum flavin is removed as a whole piece. Finally, the ipsilateral superior articular process of the lower vertebra is resected using osteotomes or high-speed burr to complete the total vasectectomy and shape the transforaminal route for the next step. The lateral portion of the ligamentum flavin should be preserved at this stage to prevent a potential boot injury while inserting the cage trials or interbody fusion cages. For effective disc removal and preserving the bony end plate, we designed a new set of end plate strippers with three different angles to strip the cartilaginous end plate away from the bony end plate. The various angles of the strippers can reach the deep contralateral corner in the disc space. The disc is removed in large pieces along with the cartilaginous end plate. We never use the disc shavers or curettes due to concerns about the bony end plate injury. After thorough disc space preparation, we will place the endoscope into the disc space to check the result. In most cases, the amount of a disc removed from a single disc space usually exceeds 10 milliliters. The cage size is determined by serial cage trials of a 1 mm increment starting from 7 mm. We prefer to insert two T leaf cages into the disc space, one vertically oriented 
and the other obliquely oriented. We insert some bone graft into the epsilateral side of the disk space in advance. The fusion cages are filled with the mineralized bone matrix. The vertical cage is usually inserted first. The Campin's triangle is generally big enough that we don't need to use any retractor to protect the dura traversing or exiting the root while inserting the cage. After the first cage is inserted, the disk space is well maintained so that we can impact a large amount of bone grafts inside. Local autografts harvested from laminotomy, allografts prepared by our bone bank, and the remaining DBM are impacted into the remaining disk space using a specialized designed funnel. The dura and the traversing nerve root are retracted medially and anchored on the disk using our specially designed cannulated dura retraction anchor. Then we can safely insert the second oblique cage beside the fixation pin. The cage should be inserted as anteriorly as possible to prevent posterior cage migration and to restore the lumbar lordosis. Cage insertion and its final position are monitored and confirmed using the fluoroscope. Use the endoscope to check the adequacy of neural decompression. Ipsilateral foramen decompression can be accomplished now to release the existing nerve root. Temporarily stop the irrigation to check the dural pulsation and identify any active bleeders. Use the radio frequency wand to coagulate the bleeders and use bone wax to seal the cancellous bone. A drain tube is mandatory to reduce the risk of epidural hematoma. Insertion of the pedicle screws is guided by fluoroscopy through the same surgical wounds and the intermuscular planes. Reduction of spondyl recesses can be achieved using the cantilever maneuvers. The wounds are closed in theirs. The patient experienced significant improvement in his lower back pain, leg pain, and the neurological symptoms. Three days after the surgery, he was discharged from the hospital. One year after the surgery, the post-operative x-ray and the CT scan showed reduced spondylolysis, solid interbody fusion, and no cage subsidence.